<laughs> I was a geologist in my previous life, right? Um, but I've become a historian because Butte is so full of history and because the people and events that occurred here are so incredibly captivating. It wasn't that difficult for that to happen and because Butte's history is interconnected internationally and internationally significant for mining, for architecture, for labor, for ethnicity, it's really easy to talk about Butte because it truly does resonate with people from all over the world in many different ways and on many different levels. The gift of a geologist, I think, is to see things that can't be seen, either because they're buried in the depths of the earth or perhaps in the depths of time. In Butte, it's uh, not that much of a change, and so nowadays I'm really focusing on the last 150 years instead of the last 4.6 billion years. But hey, what's a billion years or so among friends, right? It's still seeing things that you can't see today that no longer exist or that are hidden. So I've become a time traveler of the mind, and perhaps I'm walking the streets of Butte thinking about Carrie Nation when she was here in 1910, walking the very sidewalks that we have out there today. She came to Butte with the Bible in one hand, hatchet in the other, smashing whiskey barrels everywhere that she went. She was here the same year as Emma Goldman, who was known as the most dangerous woman in the world. She was an anarchist implicated in the assassination of William McKinley. She spoke in our Carpenters Union Hall uh, about the white slave trade by which she meant prostitution here in Butte. Well, that stuff is all wonderful, but it's just me knowing stuff. That's kind of useless, and it's not really good enough, not by half as far as I'm concerned. What I have learned is that people, many, many people, are interested in this kind of stuff, but they may not have the resources or the time or the skills to investigate them and delve into them themselves. So I have reinvented myself as an interpreter, a provider of information, a, uh, a provider of simple technology sometimes, a photograph, a historical photograph, or maybe modern technology, geographic information systems, whatever it may take so that we can immerse me and the people I talk to in the past and therefore bring it into the present. 5,000 years ago, to provide information, it would have been only the people that were within the sound of my voice, you guys, or people less than you guys, unamplified, people around a campfire, that's all I could talk to. 500 years ago, I could have written it down and Gutenberg could have printed my ideas and my thoughts. 50 years ago, of course, we had vinyl discs and recordings and strips of uh, plastic, magnetized stuff on there to uh, convey information, even video with audio and so on. And anyone around the world could have gotten my information that I want to share if they had those physical things and the playback mechanisms. Well, today, of course, we have social media, we have digital audio, imagery of all kinds, and interpretations that can be incredibly shallow, incredibly biased, or incredibly deep. And it's up to you, the audience, to figure out what the significance of all that is. But it's all available at the click of a mouse or the touch of a smartphone screen. I often feel completely overwhelmed by the volume of information, too much information. We're drenched by all of this and all of the ways that they might be interconnected. Butte and Anaconda have almost 6,000 contributing properties, historic properties, in our National Historic Landmark District. And by that count, Butte and Anaconda is the largest National Historic Landmark in the United States. So how can we possibly connect and understand and, and coordinate all of this information so vast and so diverse? Here's a house, and the guy who uh, made most of the bricks in, in Butte in 1907 lived there. Well, there's a connection, but there's more connections than that even, because a lot of people lived in most of our historic houses. What we need, I think, is a comprehensive, organized clearinghouse for all this information, organizing it in a sensible way so that it can be searched and explored and understood in a sensible way. We need an encyclopedia of Butte history. Without really thinking about this very much, we could do this in a, in a TED kind of a way, using technology and entertainment and design. Our city, Butte, is our time machine, and technology provides us with the tools to use that time machine. 
For most people who receive information, entertainment and design really significantly help them enjoy the experience and therefore to remember what they have taken in. When I had world history in college, my professor bored me to tears. I quit going to the class. I simply read the book and took the test. I managed to get a B out of the class without trying very hard, and I remember nothing from that class. It was as boring as anything I've ever done. Local history, and some say that all history is local, but remember Butte's interconnectedness to the world. Local history in Butte embodies entertainment. We say, when I do tours, we say there is no need to embellish Butte because the, tr <laughs> the true stories are unbelievable enough. <laughs> and you know that's true. With today's technology, we can package Butte history into a 200-word or a 400-word or however many words in a uh, blog post, for example. Or you can write a whole book. We could uh, make a three-minute podcast, any amount of audio that you want to record about something. Or we can make a smartphone screen that is full of places and ideas and information and images. These would be word bites and sound bites and experience bites that I would hope would forestall boredom and allow the, the listener, the learner, to uh, find whatever he or she wants and to retain that information. We can reach thousands more than the 30 bored students in my college history class. People are interested in this kind of thing. Two blogs here, two out of several that I'm involved with, that have had 70,000 page views in about two years. The interest is there. There is really no doubt in my mind about this. The Butte Library's Flickr stream has received more than a million hits. People are interested in this stuff. People are willing to search for it and find out about it, and they care. They care about it deeply. People do read less than they used to. A 2003 National Endowment for the Arts survey found that only about one-third of American adults are actually proficient at reading, and only about half of adults in the United States actually read one entire book in a year. So, there is a, a limited thing here, and, and we are in a world of sound bites and short attention spans. There's not much doubt about that, but we can still find and inform our audiences if we use entertainment and design and technology to provide it to them. I got started providing history tours uh, to people here in Butte in uh, Obute Historical Adventures in the speakeasy here that you see. This was rediscovered in 2004. It's a wonderful place to give what is frankly, a conventional tour. I, I hope and expect that it's entertaining, but it's a standard tour, me talking to people. Well, that's one of the places, one of the best preserved uh, uh, speakeasies anywhere in the West, and that gets their attention, and they hardly care what I say. They're so enthralled by the place, but it's another way of conveying information. People can experience history here in Butte in a lot of ways. They can do it on their own with our wonderful plaques on the walls by talking to people that they find on the street. Everyone in Butte is an ambassador. You can take a guided walking tour. You can take the trolley. You can take a golf cart tour with Mark Revis and, and Nicole. But these are wonderful experiences limited to those who actually come here. We're glad that they do, but we need to reach more. Butte needs to reach out. Technology can help us package historical information and deliver it in innovative and entertaining ways. History Pin that you see on the wall here is a service where you can pin historic images or any images onto Google Maps. This is Butte. You see some things that are out there on the right side in the Berkeley pit. Those are old locations. That's what was there. And we can uh, have a paragraph or a page, whatever we want. I can even do audio files and put them on History Pin and, and, and uh, quote the words of Frank Little or anything else that I want to do. Smartphone apps also, of course, integrate geographic information systems with historic sites and historic events. What was there is a website that uh, allows you to put a historical image on top of a street view. This is literally a way of looking into the past. Interactive maps can display information, data especially, in ways that make it easily vi visible. Here we have the vote distribution for suffrage in Montana back in 1914. The uh, yellow colors were the counties that voted for suffrage, and the gray colors are anti-suffrage. But it's more than just that. Look at the Silver Bow County vote. It lost, but only by about 35 votes. That's an interesting little tidbit of information, I think, to know how close it was here in Silver Bow County. 
The problem remains organizing all of this information and coordinating the information. So my idea is to have a comprehensive, encyclopedia-like, digital resource that would be served to everyone in the world that wants it, that can find it, and they can find it anywhere in the world whenever they want it. That's the idea. The ulterior motive, most clearly, is to attract them to come to Butte to experience it more directly and to spend their money while they're here. Yes, that's, that's a frank, honest motive. <laughs> Cultural and heritage tourism are the largest growing segments of the tourism industry. We have got to take advantage of that. By fostering interest in history, I am fostering economic development. History includes buildings, it includes people, it includes events, it includes a lot of things. We have to take advantage of this growing trend. I started with doing this electronically with the Butte History blog that you see here. This now holds more words in it than my book, Lost Butte. Quite a few more words, in fact. There's about 128 articles here that have now garnered more than 50,000 page views in a little over two years. And they span the gamut of Butte. There's an article about Julia Coughlin, a remarkable widow who ran a household and various businesses on East Granite Street for about 40 years. There is the story that you see up here now of citizenship denied with prejudice, thanks to Don Plessis for this one, uh, because of a, a, a man who was associated with the radical labor union, the industrial workers of the world. We also used Lost Places, the Board of Trade Saloon, some of you undoubtedly remember, that was on East Park Street. Whatever is part of our history is what we can pr produce and talk about electronically. That project expanded into the Butte Anaconda National Historic Landmark District blog. This is intended to be a catalog of all the contributing properties in our National Historic Landmark. Right now there's 150 entries and they have received about 20,000 page views. 150 out of 6,000 isn't a whole lot, I admit, but it's, it's a start, it's a drop in the bucket, you got to start somewhere. Washington State has an online history encyclopedia of the state of Washington. They obviously started with nothing some point in time. They have over 7,000 articles now about Washington State history. If Washington State can do it, we can do it too. I've added blogs for the Maywa Society and as Amanda mentioned, the Butte Labor History Center that's coming up too. So these will be things that will expand and grow over time as the others will as well. My history pin account has 258 photos, and uh, I realize that's another drop in the bucket, but it's another start. They're all linked directly into Google Maps. They all have information about them, and they're available to anyone who finds that account there on, uh, on history pin, all publicly available. I've also made some virtual tours. There's one of Chinatown. You can be sitting in China and take a tour of our Chinatown on history pin. There's another one that I created for women's history. You can walk through Butte in the map and find the sites and the people that were connected to women's history, especially the suffrage movement a hundred years ago. The Butte Silverville Public Archives have created more than 150 newspaper article links in a uh, hundred years ago today in Butte series. What I've done, all I did, is index them and make links to those things. Facebook is a little bit challenging to find things in. This provides an index to those on the Copperway website right here. All of this has cost me practically nothing other than my time. Obviously, the work is not done, but it is beginning. And all of this integrated digitally with other resources, such as that at the archives, the library, the World Museum of Mining, this is what would become the many-branched encyclopedia that I'm envisioning here. I can bring Butte into the future, and to help it rise like the phoenix from its literal and figurative ashes, uh, and we can do this by sharing its history and our accomplishments and the present day potential of Butte. I've never seen a place that has more potential than Butte. It's, it's astonishing in the potential that's here. And the central idea now is to create a group of people who will contribute both the details and the stories and the overall coordination, the integration of this to that to that, so that those slides will create the encyclopedia of Butte history that I'm talking about. This is a vision, right now it's on the website, but it doesn't have much in it. You can help, you can do it. You can share your story with people in Ireland or Croatia or Cornwall who've never been here and who care about these stories, who care deeply about Butte. 
Butte is the subject of dozens and dozens of, of books and films. I want to remake the story of this town in many ways for many people. For people that are already connected by ancestry or relations, for people who are connected through love of architecture, labor history, whatever, and for people who don't even know that they love Butte yet. They're out there. You know they are. We'll find them and we'll make it happen. And I want you to help. This is really a call to action. Remember what Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of citizens, thoughtful and committed, can change the world. And indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. We can do it. You can do it. That small group today doesn't have to be in this room. They can be anywhere in the world and be interconnected. But it can start right here. Thank you very much.